Okay. So I'm trying to ask, uh, do we have any challenges uh, before we can uh, we can start today's uh, session? Any challenges from past? Okay, uh, Rita says she has is a collection of errors. Okay, I think we we didn't we, we didn't cover our collections of errors extensively. And uh, I did that for a reason because I wanted you to first understand some of the other concepts, okay? So that uh, because when you look at uh, um, correction of errors, some of the things also relate to the P and L relate to uh, the statement of financial position and so on. So once you understand, especially when it comes to the formats of the different financial statements, then it, when we go go back to the ELAs, it will be something easier for you. Actually, uh, some people decided to have um, correction of ELAs studied last, okay, because of its dynamics. Okay, so that we will study. So I've only gotten from Sheila. Do we have any other? If you're watching this as a replay and you're not part of the class, please post your challenge on, on the WhatsApp group any challenge that you're facing, okay? I've not, I've not actually seen questions coming through on the WhatsApp group. We have... Uh, Okay, sorry, I went off. In the last classes, we are trying to look at the financial statements. And um, we looked at the changes in equity, uh, statement of financial position, income, and so on. Okay, so I hope at this point in time, you can be able to confidently, when it comes to those uh, two questions, like the question I've shared on the WhatsApp group, that is a, a question from, I think, June, this June 20, 2014. Basically, once you master the additional information, how to handle the additional information. And I want to tell you that that additional information does not, um, does not really vary uh, years from years. You know that every time a question uh, around uh, preparation of financial statements comes, in the additional information, at least there will be something to do with the depreciation. And like I said, when it comes to depreciation, you should make sure that you've, you master how to calculate straight line depreciation and reducing balance, which are really very easy, okay? Then you'll not miss out something like maybe a prepayment or an accrual. Either some things were outstanding and they were not included in the trial balance or some things were prepaid. And they also may be uh, part of the expenses that we have in the trial balance. They include some things that relate to the next to another financial year. Okay. You also find things like, let's say, um, you can also find uh, provisions. Okay. And when it comes for provisions, of course, we have provisions for bad debts. Sometimes they can be giving us uh, a provision for bad debts, or they can. Um, give us uh, a new provision percentage and we have to compare and either uh, look out for either maybe an increase or decrease in provision, okay? And we talked all about how to cater for either increase or decrease in provision, okay? So um, it's important that we, 
we get to understand uh, more in detail of that. Okay, um, today I want us to uh, uh, look more around uh, the different fo forms of business structures. If you're to remember part of our um, part of our syllabus, which you should be looking at right now, by the one of the other key documents that you should interest yourself even as we progress on your on your on your CPA journey is the syllabus okay the syllabus is very very key because it basically gives you an insight into your journey okay so if you remember our syllabus if you remember our syllabus we had um part of the first Parts of uh, financial accounting. These are general things. Financial accounting starts from down. Make sure you have a copy of this syllabus if you're a student of CPA. Okay. So, part of, uh, of course, part of the beginning part for, for this paper included forms of business entities. I'd uh, left this out for, for a reason. And uh, basically, I would come back and speak about them. So we have different forms of business entities, which uh, uh, the other side I'm calling business structures. So we have, um, as classified here, we have sole proprietorship. Okay, we have sole proprietorship, and uh, these ones, of course, they are the small businesses. Okay. These are the small businesses, small uh, small businesses that are owned by, let's say, one person, and they are cat categorized by, uh, let's say, um, okay, sustainability depends on existence of the owner, usually not easily separable from, uh, maybe from the owner. The, it's basically, uh, if they are employees, mainly you find family members, okay? Uh, you hardly find, uh, usually you'll find that uh, even when it comes to, let's say, uh, accounting, the owner basically just does uh, some simple, simple accounting, okay? Now, reason why we study different business entities is because we want to basically understand their nature, and that is from the meaning and characteristics and see how we create financial statements to suit these respective business forms, okay? So that is why uh, it's imperative for us to understand these different business structures. So right here, of course, the sole trader is the same, the same person as the sole proprietor, okay? So of course, in Uganda, uh, these are the common ones, uh, the sole trader, the partnership, and then the, uh, the limited liability company. Now, of course, we know partnerships where uh, one or more two uh, people come together and of course contribute capital towards, uh, towards starting up a business, okay? Now, uh, limited liabilities are a bit similar to partnerships, but in this case, here you'll find that it's more than uh, maybe two people uh, it's it's more numbers and this these ones are uh, basically you contribute shares so there's an aspect of um, limited liability that is uh, 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 attributed to the share capital that is contributed by the owners limited liability we can also have public and private okay private limited companies of course we know very well that um, uh, with private limited, these are these are owned by, of course, individuals. They are not listed on the stock exchange. Well, as of course the public limited companies, these ones you find them on the stock exchange. For Uganda, we have the Uganda Stock Exchange, which is the USE, 
And usually these are, these are some of the companies that you find whose financial statements are being published in newspapers, uh, for exception of the banks, okay? Because banks are also required to publish financial statements, but some banks are not public in nature. So they just do publish because of the requirements of uh, Bank of Uganda, okay? But when it comes to public companies, those are required, of course, by, uh, by, by the Capital Market Authority and uh, uh, the Company Act to publish their financial statements on to the, uh, of course, within the newspapers for the public to, work, to access, okay? So we do study the different forms of business to make sure we are, we are understanding how these different businesses work so that as the accountants, we can be able to prepare the right financial statements for each of these businesses, okay? So of course, uh, for anyone who is starting a business, we also, uh, we also need to make sure that we, we are understanding which each of the businesses we are we are starting what kind of form is it okay yeah so and like we said oh this may differ uh in terms of uh, owners liability now you'll find that a sole trader partnerships these ones the liability lies with the owners okay now the word limited liability means that of course, it brings in the concept of separability from the owner, okay? It means that the owner is only limited to the extent of the share capital that they contributed to the business. I'll give you an example. Um, a few years back, we had uh, the collapse of um, Crane Bank, okay? Crane Bank was uh, owned by one of the uh, business people here in Uganda. And when Crane Bank collapsed, of course, it also had its creditors and so on. Now, people thought that because Credit Bank collapsed, the, the business person who was behind Credit Bank would also collapse, okay? They thought that the rest of the business would also be affected. Not forgetting that this business person only had shares in, say, Credit Bank, okay? And it means that any liability arising from Rainy Bank was only limited to the contribution of his share capital to the business, okay? And that is why you see even when Green Bank closed, he remained uh, running his, his other businesses without any distortion. So that is what happens with limited liability. But if you're a sole trader, even when you have a bank liability, you find yourself, uh, bank after you and it can also go ahead to of course uh go ahead to let's say sell your different assets to recover any maybe any any, any debt that you might have taken along the way okay it's very important very 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 important now for you to not uh Now, of course, a sole trader, uh, which is our sole proprietorship, like we're saying here, it's an individual who controls and manages a business and is solely liable for all business risks and rewards. Okay? So that is what happens with a sole trader, which comes from the word sole. Okay? One. So the sole trader, of course, they are not a separate legal entity, like the way we see for uh, a limited liability company. And of course, like any other thing, of course, being a sole trader has its advantages. And one of the advantages, of course, uh, some other people would say, it is easy, is the easier decision-making, okay? The easier decision-making in terms of uh, either a decision about maybe to establish, can just wake up and say, I want to start a salon and it will be up running. And then of course, also the easier decision to, to call it quit, okay? to say I'm closing this business to be able to run other things. So that is what exactly will happen. And then of course we have the other, uh, other aspect, of course they're not subject to company regulations and uh, the general accounting principles, okay? Of course, uh, as, uh, as business uh, goes on, uh, we know that uh, 
when it comes to company regulations, these are the ones that I told you are things like you have published your financial statements, uh, you have to register with, uh, with URSB and so on. So this may not really be subject to the sole trader unless he wishes to apply some of them, okay? And then of course, you also have autonomy over business decisions. And then owner can claim all business profits and gains without any other person's interference. Now, as we have disadvantages, we also of course have disadvantages uh, that uh, comes with uh, being a sole trader. Of course, the first and the most one, a uh, common one is the unlimited liability. Like I said, in case the mogul who was running Crane Bank was running a sole trader, would uh, even after any liabilities of the company would go ahead to sell even his own property. So that is what happens. So if you're a person here who is attending this class and you would want to wish to start a business at one point in time, it's encouraged that you open up a limited liability company, okay? So that you know that you've opened up a separate entity that is separate from your personal life, okay? So that is uh, very key for you to understand. Of course, the other one, of course, it's limited by skill, time, and investment of the owner. One of the things we know very well that when it comes to, let's say, partnerships, there is uh, a combination of different skills and, of course, investments also that may come from other people that are uh, combining to be part of the business, okay? So that is what uh, exactly might happen. And then, of course, also we have one said is restrictive structure due to the non-illegal status of the entity. The sole trader cannot wake up one day and may say have uh, people buy shares into his business because he's not, he doesn't have any legal basis. Okay. And then, of course, you're also limited to things like uh, getting loans from the banks because most banks want you to be fully registered. Okay. For you to access any amount of money, let's say, from the bank. And then, of course, uh, the other biggest challenge, and I think we've seen it in Uganda, is the sustainability. And by sustainability, we mean these businesses don't live after the exit of the owner. Okay, as soon as the owner dies, the businesses close. Okay, the businesses we are seeing in Uganda, for example, the Murana companies, the nice plastics, and so on. These are companies that were started as, um, as let's say, as companies. These, these, were, these were businesses that were registered as companies. And that is why you see, even right now, these continue to run because they were not at a sole trader level. Okay, so uh, it's it's uh, very important for us to know that. So that gives you an insight of what, uh, of course, a sole trader is, okay? Now, um, yeah, so business, uh, okay, benefits and limitations, we've seen them, those are, uh, those, those are the advantages and disadvantages. They can ask you for limitations, and the disadvantages could come in handy there. The same thing with advantages, those are like benefits, okay? And then up, this is the meaning. And basically you can explain this according to the way you understand. You don't need to use the exact words. I know at least you understand what a sole trader is. And then you can also be able to give examples, especially when it comes to this professional exam. Now, this thing that we are studying today are things that uh, are not um, are not calculations in nature, okay? But you know, in financial accounting, they can also set theoretical parts, which can earn you maybe a five mark or a 10 mark, depending on the question, okay? So it's imperative that you understand some of these things, however simple, or uh, they, they seem to be usual to you, okay? Yeah, so, Partnerships, in simple ways, it's an association between two or more people who carry on uh, a business as partners, and of course, they share profits and losses according to the partnership agreement. Now, one of the key, uh, of course, one of the key documents that you find when it comes to partnerships is the partnership agreement, and it is a partnership agreement that stipulates exactly, of course, the name of the partnership. Stipulates how much everyone will contribute 
it stipulates how much they will share, okay? It stipulates how much they will share in terms of profits and losses. It goes on to stipulate uh, things like uh, any salaries uh, for, for, for any partner. It also goes ahead to stipulate what happens when a uh, partner dies. It goes also ahead to stipulate what are the con what kind of uh, procedures for uh, of course for an adding in an additional partner. They also uh, have also stupid things to do with uh, maybe how long the partnership will, work, will run and so on. So anything that guides the running of the partnership is within the partnership agreement, and that is the key future when it comes to partnerships. Okay. Now, of course, our futures, which could also be some of the benefits, definitely. Of course, it, the partnership enables sharing of ideas, skills, and resources. Yeah, you're able to come together, uh, share brains. We are uh, seeing partnerships so much common when it comes to law firms and uh, accounting firms, actually accounting firms uh, have, have uh, many partnerships, especially even for Uganda. So we see that uh, there is a lot of sharing of uh, course ideas and resources. They are easy and cheap to establish. Partnerships, unless otherwise you may not have to go and uh, do legal arrangements. These are basically, uh, these, these, these are like sole traders, but now here you're more than one person, okay? But some partnerships uh, go ahead to register. And in this case, when they register, of course, that will be a partnership, but as well as a limited, a limited liability company. Okay. Okay. To cease from to be a partnership by from understanding. I know some people continue to call them partners, but it will, it will, it will, now, it will now move to be a limited liability company. Okay. Because, the, because of the nature of, um, of, of the way partnerships are handled now. Just to give you an insight, when it comes to partnerships, when we are um, handling taxes for partnerships, we don't tax the partnership as it is. We tax the partners, okay? We tax the partners. So that is what exactly made, uh, made, made really, uh, once you register a company, definitely they'll start taxing the company. So it will cease to be a partnership, okay? So as you see, uh, Partnerships can have a written agreement and others do not. So those are the details of the partnerships as I earlier indicated. Of course, advantages, they are relatively easy and uh, simple to set up. Like I said, may not require legal structures. Uh, of course, it's also an informal business structure and not bound by uh, accounting standards. And of course, it's not bound by the company law. And then of course there is, uh, I think there is more that comes with uh, synergy and synergy comes because of uh, the ability to share capital, the ability to share skills, the ability to share knowledge, the ability to share, of course, uh, workload between two or more partners, okay? And then we have, uh, of course, we have the disadvantages. We have the disadvantages which could do be around unlimited liability to all partners for any business or for any business debts. Like I said, these, these partnerships are not registered, okay? And uh, what happens since they are not registered, of any loss, okay? Because has to be bared by the owners, okay? Or the partners and of course, that is not something, especially when it comes to partnerships. If one person is the one who has brought about the loss, that means you also have to bear it if you're a partner. Of course, uh, limited life. Yeah, partnerships are also must be dissolved if one partner dies or withdraws from the business. Yeah, that is, of course, the problem. Uh, mutual agency, of course, um, a partner is being seen as an agent of the business and is bound by any partnership contract. Now, just to also give you an insight, the way accounting firms run in Uganda, ISPAW requires that uh, 
accounting firms register under partnerships, okay? So you don't like register a company to, to, to run an accounting firm with ISPAO. And this reason why they do that is they want to make sure that even when it comes to regulations, the partners are still liable, okay? And that's why when, um, when uh, maybe there's an audit of, uh, of any client or any company, the partner who signs off is, is the one who is liable for anything around that might arise out of that audit, okay? So there's that element of, um, of owning up the liability, okay? Like you're an agent for the business, okay? And for any, 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 any losses or any, okay, as well as any re rewards as well, you're bound by, of course, the partnership contract. Yeah, partnership disputes might arise from profit sharing and decision making. Yeah, that is very true. And this comes, of course, ways there is inequality of less any contribution from the partners. One partner is active, the other one is not active. Yeah, of course. Any two or more people coming together, definitely in one way or the other, you can have some challenges. Okay. So then we have um, the limited liability companies. We have the limited liability companies, which I've said can be either public or private. Okay. And this is when you go ahead to register the company with URSB, okay? Yeah. Now, um, when it comes to limited liability companies, we have uh, uh, companies that are limited by shares and companies that are limited by guarantee. Companies limited by shares and companies limited by guarantee. Some of you that uh, might, might have not heard about that, now, companies limited by share capital are usually the private companies, okay? Companies that are limited by guarantee, uh, okay. Uh, companies limited by share capital are private, but profit-making, okay? Companies limited by guarantee, these, uh, these could be, say, uh, companies that, um, like NGOs, okay? So in, in Uganda, mostly when, when some people want to register, let's say NGOs, okay? Even before they, 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 they do register NGOs through by to the NGO forum and so on, they can register what we call companies that are limited by guarantee, okay? Now, when it comes to limited liability companies, like I said, uh, in there, they can also be private and public. We are saying that in this case, these companies are owned what by what we call shareholders. They are owned by what we call shareholders. Of course, they are the owners of the business. They are the ones that contribute capital towards these respective businesses. And then we have a separate legal entity from the owners separate legal entity from the owners. Now, um, with this, what we are trying to mean is that um, if there's any liability, okay? If there's any liability of the company, the owner is only bound to how much they contributed in terms of share capital, okay? Because legally, the owner, the only relationship between the owner and the business is the capital they contributed. That's all. Anything else, even if this company goes bankrupt, okay, the owner doesn't, doesn't have to lose every asset that he owns, okay? So that is the legal entity concept. Uh, that's what, what, what trying to mean here. And then of course, uh, shareholders have limited liability in the same way here. And that limited liability is limited to the purchase price, the share price, the purchase share price, okay? And then we have also companies has unlimited life 
not dissolved when owners die or change, okay? Yeah, and that is why today we see the Coca-Colas. Those are over 100 years plus companies that are still running even up to right now, despite the fact that even the founders really uh, died at, at a given point in time, okay? Yeah. Now, of course, um, advantages, the limited liability comes first, which means that in case of any liability, then uh, there's a limit to it. You don't have to uh, go ahead to meet all the liability. Your liability will only be limited to your share capital contribution. Then, uh, of course, taxation, the taxation rate is 30%. And here we are saying that it is lower than the top personal tax rate. Okay, now what this what this is trying to mean is, uh, you know, when it for Uganda, when we taxing corporation companies, we tax thirty percent of the profit. Okay, we tax thirty percent of the profit. Now, when it comes to personal tax, which is the pay as you earn rates. Okay, here we tax the income. Okay, not the profit that you tax the income. For example, if I'm earning, let's say, 10 million, I will not have to first subtract my expenses before the 10 million is taxed. They will go ahead to tax the 10 million as it is. Okay, before even any, any amount of money is removed for my expenses. Yet for companies, companies are allowed to deduct their expenses, okay? Before, before taxing and we only tax the residual profits. So that is why the taxation rate, the 30% is lower than the one on the top finance or the total, top personal tax rate. That's right, what we're trying to mean here, okay? And then we're also saying that uh, a, pass, a limited liability company can also be able to raise additional equity capital through public share offering. This is for the public limited companies, okay? I think we've seen Umeme do it. We've also seen, um, apart from Umeme, we have seen CIPLA, which is the quality chemicals has done some public uh, share offering. Even uh, other companies like BAT, I think BFCU, then I think uh, Nation Media, okay? Most of those companies actually listed on, on the stock exchange. All those companies are companies that raise capital through public offering, okay? Yeah. So critical for us to have that in mind, okay? Now, disadvantages. These are advantages of limited liability companies. More time consuming and costly to set up. Yeah, you don't wake up one on, on a time and just say, I now have a public limited company. There are processes that you really have to go through to register such a company. And of course, it's also costly because, uh, for example, if you're registering a company today, even if it's private, there was what we call the, uh, the stamp duty. There's a stamp duty charge that is charged on the capital that is contributed, okay? So it's basically, in summary, time consuming and cost to set up. And of course, the other, it's uh, saying that it must comply with complex company rules and other legal requirements. Yes, a limited liability company, whatever is in our company's act, the Ugandan Company Act, it's basically to regulate anything called a limited liability company, okay? So there are really uh, many rules for such companies and also many legal requirements. Then, of course, these ones are taxed from 
from the first shilling of profit. Okay. Remember, when it comes to corporation tax, we tax the profits. So yeah, disadvantage there. The sole proprietor, it's themselves, they can of course, uh, mostly, especially in Uganda here, some, most of them evade taxes, okay? It's only a few really that uh, pay the taxes. So, and then of course also, the other thing is, limited liability companies as may, uh, aspect may cause problems, okay? For example, banks often prefer to have directors' personal guarantees instead. Okay. And then we have separation of ownership and control. Of course, if you're running a corporate company, you don't have the full ownership like the one you would have had if you're a sole proprietor and control. Those that are a bit follow um, some kind of uh, trends in uh, technology world. If you read about the, the story of Steve, of Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was, uh, was actually, was, 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 was chased from his, the company started by the sh other shareholders, okay? So the gentleman started Apple and because he had, uh, he had uh, started it, he had put it as a corporate company, at one point in time, he was actually, chest out. It's one of the reasons why uh, Mark Zuckerberg has uh, made sure that he, he remains with the controlling interest in Facebook. Okay? To make sure that at one point in time, he does not really, is not pushed out by shareholders. Shareholders, other shareholders can just wake up and say, we no longer need you as a CEO of the company. Okay? So if a company you started. So that is why what happens when it comes to uh, such companies Okay, now for us to, uh, in summary, um, for us just to basically uh, know what could be the differences in some of these uh, respective business structures, we have the sole trader, the sole trader who is um, basically a one in terms of number of owners. Partnerships range from two to 50, of course, uh, uh, given different forms of partnerships and also professions. Then com companies, the own owners, uh, of course, are dependent as per the article of association. So this can be as many as possible, okay? Based on the articles of association. Articles of association, these are uh, this is part of the documents that uh, any company holds. We have the memorandum and the articles of association. Monumentum of understanding and articles of association. Then we have the limited, okay, the liability. The liability for a sole trader, it is unlimited. Means that in case of any liability for such an organization, the organization or the company bears, okay? Bears the liability, okay? So the owner, bears the liability directly. The partnership, still the owners, the partners bear the liability. When it comes to company, in this case, the company bears the liability, sorry. The company will bear the liability, okay? When it comes to profits, so trader belongs to the owner, partnership belongs to the partners as per partner agreement, Companies, the profits belong to the shareholders who are paid dividends at the discretion of the board of directors. Okay? The board of directors may wake up and say, this year we are not declaring any amount of dividends. Maybe because the is a tough year and any amount of money that And then when it comes to tax, of course, um, when it comes to tax for sole trader, the owner is taxed as individual taxpayer. Okay, I think if you uh, you you you've dealt with taxes, you know very well that if it's owner, you either fail the tax an individual tax return, 
you fail an individual tax return as a, a business owner, okay, or as an employee. So the sole traders, as we say, the owner is taxed. For the partnership, the partners are taxed as separate individuals. The partners are taxed as separate individuals. And in here, of course, you know, remember the partners share profits. So the respective profits are the profits that are taxed, okay? They are the ones that are taxed. And then when it comes to um, companies, companies are taxed on profits. Companies are taxed on profits. And we usually do 30% on these profits. And they're saying shareholders taxed on dividends, less tax credit for tax paid by the company, okay? So as we can see, uh, that is what happens when it comes to, when it comes to the business structures, okay? Just confirm that uh, is something I didn't talk about here. So mostly this, this part is examined as theory, okay? Like I said, most of the questions I've seen are questions around the differences between partnership and limited liability company, okay? Um, yeah, of course they can also bring uh, something around partnerships. Around partnerships, they can ask you about the content of the partnership agreement, which I've already high indicated to you uh, what, what are some of the contents. I've already spoken of those. Now, uh, like we've seen here, I've explained public and private, okay? Private companies, of course, these are limited companies that, limited liability companies that are not required to publish on the stock exchange. And these are the common ones in Uganda. For public, these are the ones that uh, list on the stock exchange. If you watch news, these are the, these are the companies that, uh, if, uh, they, that will be displayed under business news to show how sh respective shares for such companies have moved during the period, okay? So when it comes to public versus private, this is what you need to know now. Public companies, this one don't have any limit to ownership, okay? You can have as many as uh, possible shareholders. And of course, every, like share, if any shareholder can sell to another shareholder without consultation of, 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 of let's say other, any other shareholders. Yet when it comes to private limited companies, there's some element of control, okay? On who buys the shares and who doesn't buy the share. But when it comes to public right now, if I have money, I can actually go and buy shares in Umeme, okay? Because there's, there's somebody whom, whom you'll find selling. So I'll be able to buy their shares and become an owner of Umeme, okay? Which is not the same thing as for private, okay? Then also, when it comes to public and private, public, the steps for registering public are, are a little longer, okay? And one of the things that we do when it, we are registering a public limited company is what we call drawing up a prospectus, okay? You can just note the word prospectus and maybe search more about it. A prospectus is usually a document that speaks more about the company that is intending to sell shares on the stock exchange, okay? So that is what happens when it comes to um, that the public companies, they require that document called a prospectus, okay? There are also different stages that you go through before you actually 
register on the stock exchange. Okay. Of course, advantages and disadvantages, these ones we've just looked at them, but more for all of them, the most important advantage is the aspect of limited liability. Meaning in case anything really goes uh, bad, then these people don't have any, any, any much problem, okay? To really, um, to really struggle with, apart from, of course, apart from, apart from, let's say, the capital that they contributed, okay? So that is uh, important for us to take home, okay? So do we have any, any questions? Do we have any questions on that information? Okay, so I hope we do not. Um, we will be studying, uh, I will be studying uh, partnerships on uh, as a separate topic, like preparing, preparing financial statements for partnerships, but just to uh, give you an insight of how this will look like, even ahead of uh, our partnership class that will come in the due course there. Um, okay, what will happen? Okay, okay, this, these are just statements just to show you. This is a sole trader's statement of profit and loss. It's a sole trader, okay? So uh, they have their sales, they have their cost of sales, they have their gross profit, they have administration expenses, they have rent, finance expenses, depreciation of equipment, wages and salaries, and then and lastly, they have their profit, okay? So they're saying the statement of profit and loss shows income less expenses. And they're saying no taxation is shown, okay? Because of the nature, most of these don't even pay taxes. Now, partnerships. Like we said, partnerships share profits according to what we call the partnership agreement, okay? Now, in this case, uh, for this question, we have this as the profit. And then we have respective partners. We have Mark, we have James, we have David, okay? We have those three. And then they are telling us that this share, uh, this share profits 18% for Mark, 71% for James, and 11% for David, okay? So once you've gotten the 31,200, which is a profit, you go ahead to, uh, of course, if there are salaries, you go ahead to recognize the salaries for the respective partners, and then you get, you get uh, your balance. Now it is of this balance that you distribute it in the respective percentages of 18%, 71%, and 11%, okay? There's what we call uh, the profit appropriation account when it comes to partnerships, okay? And this that we've just done here is, uh, is part of the profit appropriation, okay? This is like the proper the profit appropriation. We have other things that you may also find, especially in the profit appropriation, could be, for example, interest on capital from the partners. You can have drawings from partners, interest on drawings, okay, and so on. Okay. So the statement of financial position, how it looks like, I think we can see. We have the net assets, okay? Uh, the net assets, which is uh, the fixed asset, and of course, and the non-current assets, 
and then uh, uh, also including uh, the liabilities, less the liabilities, okay? Then we have equity. Now, when it comes to capital, capital is distributed according to the respective partners, okay? Now, if it was a sole trader, and this value is 560, this sole trader will only have 560 in the amounts, okay? But when it comes to partnerships, this, that, this 560 will be broken down, the 100,000, the 400,000, the 60,000 and so on, okay? So that is what exactly will happen. And then we have the current uh, current accounts. These are also common uh, when it comes to partnerships. Um, when we study partnerships, we'll study things like uh, fixed capital account. And then we we'll also study things like floating capital accounts. Now, when it comes to, um, our floating, of course, capital accounts here. Okay, uh, the floating capital account will, will have both, will be a combination of, of course, capital and current account. And then a fixed capital account will only have it the capital account, okay, alone. But uh, that we shall cover it much more when we really get ahead, okay? So that is what uh, basically, I wanted to indicate to you, okay? At least we've done some questions for corporate companies. So it's also good for you to also know that uh, in addition to the corporate companies, we have other business structures that uh, we make. As an individual, as, a, as a, uh, an accountant, you may re be required to draw financial statements for such entities, okay? So, it's uh, that 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 very important, okay? So I hope you get that uh, much clearer. And um, I want to say that uh, right now, make sure that you start definitely, of course, preparing for the exam. By the way, we have a very limited time. We have a very, very limited time to the exam, okay? Yeah, of course, given the conditions, yes, we, we still have some uncertainties, but I want to believe that ISPA is, is really negotiating with government to make sure we really have that exam, okay? Just like the way we had it uh, last time under the same conditions. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, but make sure you're giving the preparations enough time so that in case of anything that happens and we have the exam, then you, you should you should not have really any much issue. Are we together? Yeah. And uh, I hope you're also reading the notes. I really gave you uh notes so make sure that you get reading those notes very very clearly practice as many questions as possible you know you can have the knowledge but you can go to the exam and because you have you've not practiced any questions before i want to tell you that you're going to get uh challenges of finishing you get one exam instead of doing five questions you're going to end up doing only four questions. And by doing four questions means that now you've limited your marks to be out of 80 because you've left out a question that is worth 20 marks. So of the 80, it is likely that you may not even get uh, 50 of the 80, okay? So you don't want to really uh, put yourself into such circumstances. By the time you get to the exam, if you've done good preparations, practice rightly, you can be able to do the five questions and know that at least your target is, let's say, a 15 mark on every question that you do attempting, and that will be around 75 marks. So if you at least targeted to earn 75 marks, by good chance you can even earn an 80, or you can maybe earn a 70, okay? And that, that alone having such marks on your transcript 
makes you stand out. Definitely at the end of the day, many people are doing CPA. You are a lot that is doing CPA after we did CPA a long time ago. Some of the people that we did CPA with are still looking for the jobs. And even when you're done, these are people, some of the people you will compete with, okay? So for you to make sure that you're standing out is to also make sure that some of your marks speak for you, okay? You know, I know with the, how are you gonna uh, start the system? Yes, you may say it's not a good one, but definitely marks remain a true representation of either we can or we cannot uh, be able to, let's say. So people are recruiting, want to really look at it, at, at some of those results. So you don't want to fall a victim of not being shortlisted because you have a 50 in financial accounting, okay? Remember somebody shortlisting you for an accounting job and you have, let's say 54. That alone uh, makes other person feel like you don't understand the work that you do, okay? So let's, let's make sure that uh, we are trying out questions, past paper questions. And any question that I share on the WhatsApp group, please guys, let's make sure that we try it out to make sure that uh, we are not uh, we are not having any challenges at the end of the day, okay? So that is uh, basically what I wanted to share with you for today. Uh, I know we started a class late, but I just wanted you to try out to share with me the solutions before we could start the class. To those that shared, thank you so much. Uh, I think it was Christine and Sheila shared. Let's make sure that um, we we also share other people like uh, uh, Michael, Geoffrey, uh, Beatrice, those that are on this call and those that watch the replay, make sure you share your solution. I'm giving you uh, up to tomorrow, okay? Make sure at least by, 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 by at least by the close of tomorrow, you've shared your solution. If you've shared your solution and you see another person sharing your solution, just try to check through and check yourself and see if another person's solution diverts somehow from you, okay? It's basically like a remote group discussion. So you're able to compare your results with the rest of the other. Then later on, I'll, I'll, of course, I'll come around and be able to guide you on each of the items, okay? Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, and I wish you all the best. Let's make sure that we start reading as much as possible because we have very limited time. And also when you read, you also, um, it helps you build up confidence. The things that we are studying right now, you actually forget them. If at all, whatever we study, you, go, you just go and cover them up, okay? Yeah. So I uh, want to say thank you so much um, for this. There is a question. Uh, please go on with the question. There's one question here, I think by Christine. Uh, I'm asking, are you able to send us those notes tonight? Okay. For the ones that we've just gone through? Yes. It's okay. Let me just share them right now. Okay, fine. Kale, thank you so much and I uh, wish you well. Bye-bye.